Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's lesson which will answer the question how did human civilization begin in ancient Mesopotamia and specifically we're going to focus on the things that make a civilization a civilization your essential question for the lesson which should go across the top of your Cornell notes is how did human civilization begin in ancient Mesopotamia. Go ahead and write that down now and then we will go on and break it down into the various things that make a civilization a civilization that comes straight out of your History Alive book. So we're going to go to the 35,000 foot level and go through and list those components or things that make a civilization a civilization. The first thing is a stable food supply. If you cannot feed your population, you do not have the luxury of settling down to be civilized. You are busy scavenging for food on a regular basis. You also need to have a social structure or a division of labor. If you have everyone doing everything, you do not have a very organized society. If you have various jobs broken down so that different parts of your population are responsible for different things, then you have what we call an advanced social structure, which is necessary to be considered a civilization. You also need to have a system of government. If you do not have a way of running the show, of making things happen, of making sure that life and society is orderly, then you are not going to be a very civilized people. In most cases, you'll have a religious system or a belief system which serves as the foundation upon which everything else is built. If everyone can rally around common beliefs, it leads to a society that is much more, here's a fancy word for you, cohesive. And a highly developed culture, meaning you have arts, you have music, you have architecture, and you have literature. That life is vibrant and engaging for everyone who participates in the society. And, of course, the final one is a written language. Uh, having a language is a good place to start, and being able to write that language down and keep records is even more important. So now we're going to go and look at these in a little bit more detail on the following slides. We're going to look at ancient Sumer. It is not pronounced summer. It is pronounced Sumer, and it was the first civilization in ancient Mesopotamia. The first thing the Sumerians were able to accomplish for themselves was a stable food supply. If you don't have food, you can't survive. And more importantly, you cannot stay in one place if you are constantly scavenging for food. The Sumerians used irrigation to keep their fields watered, and you might notice that is a vocabulary word. Um, irrigation is when you take water from where it is to where it's needed. They used canals, dams, and reservoirs in their system. So they had places where they kept water, they used dams to hold the water back, and they used canals to take the water from one place to another. And the picture at the bottom there shows you some canals. Um, they also invented the plow and used the plow to turn the fields over. This was an example of technology. And, of course, technology is one of our vocabulary words. Things that human beings create to make life easier. And they also used oxen to pull the plow. So they learned to domesticate animals and to use those animals to pull their machinery, which was extremely helpful to them. The Sumerians also had a very advanced social structure. Uh, Sumer. Sumerians lived in Sumer. They had an advanced social structure. At the top of that social structure was the king, of course, 
And right below the king were priests, landowners, and government officials. So if you were a priest, a landowner, or a government official, you were living high on the hog in ancient Sumer. Right below that were the merchants, the artisans, the farmers, and it should say fishermen. Fishers would be people who were fishermen. Someone gets a Jolly Rancher if they noticed that before I said it. Uh, and the reason these were important is because they were specific skills that you needed some level of training or experience in order to do. And at the bottom were the slaves. The slaves had to live with their owners and were not permitted to own any real property. So that put them at the bottom of the social structure. Sometimes we call the social structure the social pyramid because it's often organized or represented by a pyramid, just like you see on the bottom of the slide there. Another extremely important feature of a civilization, which was developed in ancient Sumer for the very first time in human history, was government. Government is needed to direct people's behavior and keep life orderly. If you don't have a government, if you don't have police, if you don't have a system of education, schools, and military, all those things, life can become extremely disorderly, uh, and disorder makes it difficult for civilization to function. Sumerians believed that their kings were chosen by the gods. So the king was able to claim that, yep, I'm the king, and the gods said I could be the king, so you have to do what I say. That worked out pretty well for them because that meant they couldn't be challenged. And kings also served as military leaders. Um, if you did not have a strong military to impose your will on others, you could not be successful as the leader of a civilization, much less an empire. There were also professional soldiers as well as citizen soldiers. And by professional soldiers, we mean someone who's a soldier 24-7, 365, all year long, and that's their job, whereas citizen soldiers would be called to duty if the city-state was threatened or if the king was going off to war in a far-off area away from the city-state. And then, of course, you had scribes who were important officials, and their job was to record the laws. So if you had a formal writing system, it would have been the scribe's job to use that formal writing system and keep records. And in the case of Sumerians, they did not have paper, so records were kept on clay tablets, which we will talk about in a little bit. Religion is also an important part of civilization, and in ancient Sumer, their religion was polytheistic, which is a word meaning belief in many gods. So even though that is not formally part of our vocabulary list, that is an extremely important word for you to know. Uh, and the other word you would want to know is monotheistic, which is a belief in one god. Uh, in this case, the Sumerians were polytheistic. Pleasing the gods was an extraordinarily important part of their daily life. And pretty much most of their activities were geared towards making sure that the gods were happy or that they were perceiving that what they were doing was making the gods happy. There were giant temples in the middle of every city-state city called ziggurats, and they were built to house and honor the gods. And they were extremely large buildings that were very imposing and basically hovered over the entire city. And you see a picture of one at the bottom there. At the top of the ziggurat, priests stood there at the top of the long staircases that you see down here. There's a long staircase. There's a long staircase. Um, and they pretty much on a daily basis asked for the blessing of the gods. The arts were also extremely important. And in ancient Sumer, metal workers made weapons and cups that were very artistic in nature. And the fact that they had the ability to manipulate metal was also an important sign that ancient Sumer was indeed a civilization. They 
they also made mirrors and jewelry. And imagine the first person to see a mirror. Prior to that, the only way you would know what you looked like is if you were to look into shimmering water and see your reflection in the water. Because until the mirror was invented, we had no way of seeing what we looked like. And they also played music, which was believed to bring pleasure to the gods. Really, it brought pleasure to people, but if they believed it brought pleasure to the gods, so much the better. And that device you see down there was the very first harp, which is known as the lyre. L-Y-R-E, the lyre, which was a kind of harp invented by the ancient Sumerians in Mesopotamia. And finally, we have technology and writing. Uh, civilizations have to have advanced technology and they have to have a writing system. The Sumerians invented the wheel, which you could say is the answer to a trivial pursuit question. Someone had to invent the wheel. It just so happens that was the ancient Sumerians. So now when you play trivial pursuit, you will know the answer. Their wheels were made, as you can see there in the picture at the bottom, out of pieces of wood that were lashed together uh, with bars and screws. So it was not a single object, but it was pieces that were lashed together. The Sumerians also invented the arch, which aided with architecture. And the arch was later perfected by the Romans, whom we will learn about down the road. But the main thing Sumerians are known for is inventing the wheel. Pretty important thing. Imagine our life without the wheel. Just imagine. And finally, the Sumerians did have a writing system. Their writing system was called cuneiform, and you can see what cuneiform looked like down here at the bottom. Cuneiform is a Latin word meaning wedge because they used a wedge-shaped stylus to make the symbols. And you guys probably know what a stylus is from your various electronic devices, but in this case, a stylus was used to make indentations or marks in the clay, and those marks in the clay, depending on their shape and direction, uh, represented different sounds of the Sumerian language. Uh, the Sumerian language was written on clay tablets. It was not written on paper. Paper was not invented until the Egyptians, who came later. And that word is papyrus. And cuneiform was based on what we know as pictographs, which is another vocabulary word. A pictograph is a picture or a symbol that represents a sound or a word. And ladies and gentlemen, if you take all of these things together you know not only what made Sumerian civilization unique and an example of a civilization, in fact, the very, very first civilization in human history, but you know all of the factors and qualities that make up any civilization. When historians look at civilizations, these are the factors or the lenses that they look through to determine whether or not it was or was not a civilization. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, this would be an outstanding time to write a summary at the end of your Cornell notes, and you should have at least one sentence for each of the factors that makes up a civilization. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off from yet another online YouTube lesson. We'll see you next time here on the Waldo Social Studies History YouTube channel.